Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Jesus forgave us of all sin, past, present, and even future sin. Andrew brought good news to me. I could understand the Bible more the way he taught it. Jesus forgave you one time, and that's for everything. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today is my last day to teach on this series, The War Is Over. I've got this book right here. It's a 200-plus page book. I've also got CDs and DVDs that were taken from our television program. We've got study guides, and I've been teaching on this for five weeks, and uh, today's my last day to make all of these materials available. I tell you, this has been a powerful teaching. This is basically the gospel. This is just the gospel. I've spent a lot of time showing that God loves us independent of what we deserve. And sad to say, the average Christian today believes God loves them only when they are worthy of it. And I know that they may not be that just blatant with it. They might not come and come out and say it that way. But technically, that's how people think. I've had people come to me in prayer lines before, and they say, uh, you know, I just don't feel worthy. Well, that's because you don't understand the gospel. You don't understand the um, new covenant. The truth is none of us are worthy. But our unworthiness doesn't stop God from loving us, moving in our lives, healing us, delivering us, giving us joy and peace, or any of these things. But see, the church as a whole has not understood this. They think that there is still a war between God and us over our sin. In the Old Covenant, there was, and God declared war on sin, and He released His wrath. And you see the wrath of God poured out on people in the Old Covenant. But in the New Covenant, it's different. And that's what I've been spending all of this time talking about, is trying to get people to recognize that God has now signed a peace treaty with us through Jesus. Jesus has purchased peace between us and God. And God is not imputing your sins unto you. He's not holding them against you. Man, that is nearly too good to be true news. Look at this here in 1 John chapter 4. It says in verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Again, I was talking about this earlier in the week, but there is this condition that I call spiritual dyslexia, and people think that they see things backwards, just like a dyslexic reads things opposite of what they are. Well, there are people that will see this, and it says everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And they'll say, well, I want to be born of God, and I want to know God, and so what do I have to do? Well, then I have to love. And so they start just trying to make themselves love everybody. Jesus said, you know, that when somebody smites you on one cheek, you turn to him the other cheek. When somebody takes you to court and sues you at the law and takes away your coat, give him your cloak also. Did you know that those things aren't just difficult? They're impossible. Without God living on the inside of you, if somebody spits in your face, you're going to spit back or you're going to fight back or do something. If somebody smites you on the one cheek, you're going you're to fight and defend your other cheek. That's just the way that it is in the natural. The Christian life isn't just difficult. It's impossible to live on your own. This isn't saying that you have to love everybody else and then you'll be born of God and then you'll know God. No, it's saying that knowing God causes you to love other people. See, again, if you don't understand that, if you think I've got to love and then I'll be born of God, no, you've got to be born of God and then loving is the fruit, the byproduct of it. If you don't understand that, then you've got spiritual dyslexia that comes from close contact with religion. And then it goes on to say in the next verse, verse 8, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And the word know here isn't just talking about intellectual. You know, in our world today, we say, I know something, and that just means that you maybe have some knowledge about it. But in the uh, ancient Eastern uh, world where the Bible was written to these people, no, there wasn't just intellectual. It was talking about 
AND EXPERIENTIAL KNOWLEDGE. FOR INSTANCE, YOU CAN SEE WHERE IT SAYS THAT ADAM KNEW HIS WIFE EVE AND THAT SHE CONCEIVED AND BORE A CHILD. AND THEN CAIN KNEW HIS WIFE AND ALL OF THESE PEOPLE. WHEN THEY, WHEN THEY KNEW A PERSON, IT'S TALKING ABOUT INTIMACY, SEXUAL RELATIONSHIP THAT PRODUCED A CHILD. IT'S NOT TALKING ABOUT JUST INTELLECTUAL KNOWLEDGE. YOU KNOW, I'M NOT GOING TO TAKE TIME ON MY TELEVISION PROGRAM TO EXPLAIN ALL OF THIS, BUT HOPEFULLY YOU KNOW THAT JUST KNOWING A PERSON INTELLECTUALLY ISN'T GOING TO GET YOU PREGNANT. YOU'VE GOT TO HAVE A LITTLE BIT MORE INTIMACY WITH THEM THAN THAT. AND THIS IS WHAT IT'S TALKING ABOUT. SO WHEN IT SAYS, HE THAT LOVETH NOT, KNOWETH NOT GOD, FOR GOD IS LOVE. YOU MAY KNOW ABOUT GOD, BUT YOU DON'T REALLY KNOW GOD. YOU HAVEN'T BEEN CHANGED IF THERE ISN'T LOVE IN YOUR HEART. AND THIS DOESN'T MEAN THAT YOU DO IT PERFECTLY, BECAUSE WE'RE ALL GROWING AND WE'RE IN DIFFERENT STAGES OF DEVELOPMENT, BUT WHEN YOU KNOW GOD, IT WILL BE REFLECTED IN YOUR ACTIONS, AND THAT'S WHAT ALL OF THESE VERSES ARE SAYING. IN VERSE 9, IT SAYS, AND THIS WAS MANIFESTED, THE LOVE OF GOD TOWARDS US, BECAUSE THAT GOD SENT HIS ONLY BEGOTTEN SON INTO THE WORLD THAT WE MIGHT LIVE THROUGH HIM. HEREIN IS LOVE, NOT THAT WE LOVED GOD, BUT THAT HE LOVED US AND SENT HIS SON TO BE THE PROPITIATION FOR OUR SINS. MAN, THIS IS AWESOME, AND I'VE SAID THIS OVER AND OVER AND OVER DURING THIS SERIES. BUT LOVING GOD IS A BYPRODUCT OF HAVING A RELATIONSHIP WITH HIM. IT'S NOT LOVING HIM. IT'S NOT DOING THESE THINGS AND LIVING HOLY THAT PRODUCES RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD, BUT IT'S JUST HUMBLING YOURSELF AND RECEIVING IT. IT'S LIKE IT SAYS RIGHT HERE. That IT'S NOT THAT WE LOVED GOD FIRST. IT'S NOT THAT, GOD, WE GOT OUR ACT TOGETHER NOW. WILL YOU ACCEPT ME? NO, YOU DIDN'T HAVE YOUR ACT TOGETHER. YOU WERE UNWORTHY. AND GOD JUST CAME DOWN, AND BECAUSE HE IS LOVE, NOT BECAUSE YOU ARE LOVELY, HE GAVE HIS SON, AND HE DIED, AND HE PAID FOR OUR SINS. GOD LOVED US. WE DIDN'T LOVE HIM. ANOTHER VERSE THAT GOES ALONG WITH THIS IS ROMANS 5, 8, GOD COMMENDED HIS LOVE TOWARD US IN THAT WHILE WE WERE YET SINNERS, CHRIST DIED FOR US. YOU KNOW, WE SAY, we say THESE THINGS ABOUT, I FOUND THE LORD. THE TRUTH IS, GOD WASN'T THE ONE THAT WAS LOST. GOD FOUND US. YOU MIGHT HAVE BEEN SEEKING, BUT IT'S BECAUSE GOD PUT THAT DESIRE IN YOUR HEART AND STUFF. GOD IS THE ONE WHO INITIATES EVERYTHING. YOU DON'T, YOU DON'T SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER DO ALL OF THESE THINGS AND THEN GOD LOOKS AT YOU AND SAYS, OH, YOU'RE SO SINCERE. OH, YOU'RE SO GOOD. I'VE GOT TO MOVE IN YOUR LIFE. NO, WE ALL HAVE GONE ASTRAY IS WHAT IT SAYS OVER IN ISAIAH CHAPTER 53. WE'RE LIKE SHEEP. WE'VE ALL GONE ASTRAY. WE'VE TURNED EVERY ONE UNTO OUR OWN WAY. YOU KNOW, YOU DON'T HAVE TO BE A RAPIST AND A MURDERER AND A LIAR AND A THIEF TO BE UNGODLY. THE WORD UNGODLY MEANS NOT LIKE GOD. GOD IS PERFECT. GOD IS PURE. YOU MAY NOT HAVE GONE OUT AND DONE SOME OF THE THINGS THAT THE WORLD BRANDS AS THESE TERRIBLE THINGS, BUT I GUARANTEE YOU, EVERY ONE OF US HAS BEEN SELFISH. EVERY ONE OF US HAS TURNED TO OUR OWN WAY. WE HAVE DONE OUR OWN THING. WE HAVE NOT FOLLOWED GOD. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? EVERY LAST ONE OF US NEEDS SALVATION, NOT ON THE BASIS OF WHAT WE DESERVE, BUT ON THE BASIS OF GOD'S MERCY. AND THAT'S WHAT ALL OF THIS IS ABOUT. THIS WHOLE TEACHING THAT I'VE BEEN DOING, IS ABOUT THE NEW COVENANT THAT GOD EXTENDED THINGS TO US ON THE BASIS OF GRACE AND NOT ON THE BASIS OF MERIT. IN VERSE 11, IT SAYS, BELOVED, IF GOD SO LOVED US, WE OUGHT ALSO TO LOVE ONE ANOTHER. YOU KNOW, ONE OF THE REASONS THAT WE DON'T LOVE OTHER PEOPLE AND GET ALONG WITH THEM IS BECAUSE WE HAVEN'T RECEIVED THE LOVE OURSELVES. I HAVE SEEN THIS WHEN I'VE BEEN COUNSELING PEOPLE IN MARRIAGE, THAT I'VE TOLD PEOPLE, I REMEMBER TELLING THIS ONE GUY THAT YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO LOVE YOUR WIFE AS CHRIST LOVED THE CHURCH. YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO DO THIS. AND I GAVE HIM A LIST OF THINGS THAT HE WAS DOING THAT WAS JUST CAUSING PROBLEMS IN THE MARRIAGE. AND AS I WAS TALKING TO HIM, THE LORD JUST SHOWED ME, HE SAYS, HE CAN'T DO THAT BECAUSE HE'S NEVER RECEIVED THIS LOVE. YOU CAN'T GIVE AWAY WHAT YOU DON'T HAVE. AND THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE THAT ARE TRYING TO LOVE OTHERS. THEY KNOW THAT I'M SUPPOSED TO TURN THE OTHER CHEEK. THEY KNOW THAT I'M SUPPOSED TO, YOU KNOW, LOVE MY WIFE AS CHRIST LOVED THE CHURCH. BUT IF YOU HAVEN'T RECEIVED AN UNCONDITIONAL LOVE FROM GOD, THEN YOU CAN'T GIVE LOVE UNCONDITIONALLY. AGAIN, I, AS I WAS TALKING TO THIS GUY, I WAS SAYING WHAT HE SHOULD DO, AND HE IMMEDIATELY JUST TURNED AROUND, BUT SHE DID THIS, SHE DID THIS. 
AND SEE, he, HE THINKS THAT GOD LOVES HIM CONDITIONALLY, AND SO HE WAS HAVING TROUBLE RECEIVING, AND HE COULDN'T TURN AROUND AND GIVE UNCONDITIONAL LOVE BECAUSE HE HAD NEVER RECEIVED IT. YOU CAN'T GIVE AWAY WHAT YOU'VE NEVER RECEIVED. SO WE NEED TO RECOGNIZE, FIRST OF ALL, HOW GOD HAS LOVED US COMPLETELY UNCONDITIONAL, NOT BASED ON YOUR PERFORMANCE, THAT THERE IS NO PERFORMANCE RELATIONSHIP BETWEEN US AND GOD. GOD LOVES US BECAUSE HE IS LOVE AND NOT BECAUSE WE ARE LOVELY. AND ONCE YOU UNDERSTAND THAT, AND ONCE YOU BEGIN TO RECOGNIZE THAT THE WAR IS OVER, HE'S NOT IMPUTING YOUR SINS UNTO YOU. HE PLACED ALL OF YOUR WRATH UPON JESUS. AND IF YOU COULD EVER RECEIVE THAT AND UNDERSTAND HOW MUCH GOD LOVES YOU, THEN YOU COULD TURN AROUND AND YOU COULD GIVE THAT UNCONDITIONAL LOVE TO SOMEONE ELSE. BUT I'M TELLING YOU, BROTHERS AND SISTERS, THIS IS ONE OF THE MAJOR PROBLEMS RIGHT HERE. JUST LIKE THIS SAYS, HEREIN IS LOVE, NOT THAT WE LOVED GOD, BUT THAT HE LOVED US, AND HE GAVE HIS SON TO BE THE PROPITIATION FOR OUR SINS. BELOVED, IF GOD SO LOVED US, WE OUGHT ALSO TO LOVE ONE ANOTHER. WE CAN'T LOVE OTHERS WITH THAT GOD KIND OF LOVE UNTIL WE RECEIVE IT FOR OURSELVES. SO YOU'VE GOT TO RECEIVE FORGIVENESS. YOU'VE GOT TO RECOGNIZE THAT YOU DON'T DESERVE ANYTHING. JESUS GAVE A PARABLE OVER IN THE 18TH CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF MATTHEW, AND HE TALKED ABOUT A MAN WHO WAS FORGIVEN THIS HUGE AMOUNT OF MONEY. IT WOULD EQUATE TO HUNDREDS OF THOUSANDS OF DOLLARS IN TODAY'S MONEY. AND JUST BECAUSE HE BEGGED THE MASTER TO LET HIM GO, THEN THE MASTER FORGAVE HIM. BUT THEN HE TURNS AROUND AND FINDS SOMEBODY THAT OWNS HIM LIKE THE EQUIVALENT OF TEN DOLLARS. AND THE PERSON BEGGED HIM TO LET, uh, YOU KNOW, TO LET THAT DEBT GO, AND HE WOULDN'T DO IT. HE THREW HIM INTO JAIL. AND WHEN THE MASTER THAT HAD FORGIVEN THE HUNDREDS OF THOUSANDS OF DOLLARS SAW WHAT HAD HAPPENED, HE CALLED HIM BACK IN, AND HE SAYS, NOW YOU'RE ACCOUNTABLE FOR THIS WHOLE AMOUNT. I FORGAVE YOU. YOU SHOULD HAVE FORGIVEN OTHERS, BUT IF YOU DON'T FORGIVE OTHERS, I'M NOT GOING TO FORGIVE YOU. AND THAT WAS AN EXAMPLE ABOUT HOW THAT WE SHOULD TURN AROUND AND FORGIVE OTHERS. IF YOU EVER UNDERSTOOD HOW MUCH GOD HAS FORGIVEN YOU, IF YOU EVER UNDERSTOOD THAT, THEN YOU'D BE ABLE TO FORGIVE OTHER PEOPLE. BUT, YOU KNOW, THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT THEY HONESTLY, THEY ARE COMPARING THEMSELVES AMONG THEMSELVES, MEASURING THEMSELVES WITH OTHER PEOPLE, AND THEY JUST DON'T SEE HOW BAD THINGS ARE. DID YOU KNOW THAT THE LAW, THE OLD TESTAMENT LAW HAS A PURPOSE, AND IT IS TO SHOW YOU YOUR VILENESS, YOUR UNGODLINESS, SO THAT YOU WOULD QUIT PROMOTING YOURSELF AND TRUSTING IN SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS, AND INSTEAD YOU'D THROW YOURSELF ON THE MERCY OF GOD. EVEN THOUGH WE AS NEW TESTAMENT CHRISTIANS DO NOT RELATE TO GOD ON THE BASIS OF OUR PERFORMANCE, THERE STILL IS A PURPOSE FOR THE LAW, AND THAT IS FOR THOSE THAT DON'T REALIZE HOW MUCH THEY'VE BEEN FORGIVEN. YOU OUGHT TO STUDY THE LAW AND REALIZE JUST WHAT YOU ARE, WHAT YOU ARE WORTHY OF RECEIVING. AND IF YOU EVER GOT A GLIMPSE OF THAT AND THEN UNDERSTOOD THAT THROUGH THE NEW TESTAMENT, YOU HAVE BEEN TOTALLY SET FREE OF ALL SIN, PAST, PRESENT, AND EVEN SINS YOU HADN'T COMMITTED YET, I TELL YOU WHAT, IT WOULD MAKE YOU SO MERCIFUL. IT WOULD MAKE YOU SO THANKFUL FOR THE MERCY THAT YOU'VE GOT THAT YOU WOULD WIND UP BEING MERCIFUL TO OTHER PEOPLE. YOU KNOW, I'VE SAID THIS MANY TIMES, BUT I HAD THIS ENCOUNTER WITH THE LORD WHEN I WAS 18 YEARS OLD, 1968. AND I HADN'T DONE A LOT OF THINGS OUTWARDLY THE WAY THAT OTHER PEOPLE HAVE. I'VE NEVER USED PROFANITY, NEVER DRANK LIQUOR, I NEVER SMOKED A CIGARETTE. I'VE LIVED A SUPER, SUPER, SUPER HOLY LIFE RELATIVE TO MOST PEOPLE. BUT I WAS IN A PRAYER MEETING MARCH THE 23rd, 1968, AND GOD SHOWED UP. I KNOW THAT HE'S ALWAYS WITH US, BUT SOMETIMES HE MANIFESTS HIMSELF, AND I MEAN GOD SHOWED UP, AND I SAW THE GLORY OF GOD. AND IT'S NOT SOMETHING THAT WAS COMMUNICATED TO ME IN WORDS. BUT I JUST INTUITIVELY KNEW. I SAW THE GLORY OF GOD, THE HOLINESS OF GOD, THE GOODNESS OF GOD. AND WHEN I SAW THAT, MY RELATIVE UNWORTHINESS WAS JUST HUGE. YOU KNOW, PRIOR TO THAT TIME, I LIVED A HOLIER LIFE THAN ANYBODY I KNEW, EVEN THE PASTORS OF THE CHURCH. <laughs> I KNOW SOME PEOPLE THINK I'M... I'M BLOWING SMOKE HERE, BUT HONESTLY, I WOULD GO TALK TO THE PASTORS OF THE CHURCH. THEY SAID THAT YOU SHOULDN'T LIVE IN SIN, AND SO I'D SAY, WELL, WHAT'S SIN? AND THEY'D TELL ME, YOU KNOW, THINGS LIKE, YOU KNOW, DRINKING AND CUSSING. I SAID, I DON'T DO ANY OF THAT. SO WHAT ELSE? AND THEY, 
THEY COULDN'T MENTION IT. AND I ACTUALLY LED MORE PEOPLE TO THE LORD WHEN I WAS A TEENAGER THAN THE PASTOR OF THE CHURCH DID. I READ THE WORD MORE THAN ANY OF MY TEACHERS IN MY SUNDAY SCHOOL CLASS DID. I MEAN, I DID ALL OF THESE THINGS. AND RELATIVE TO PEOPLE, I THOUGHT I WAS DOING REALLY, REALLY GOOD. BUT ON THAT NIGHT, MARCH THE 23rd, 1968, WHEN GOD SHOWED UP AND I SAW HIS GLORY, I, I TELL YOU, I SAW MY UNWORTHINESS. AND EVEN THOUGH IT WASN'T SOME OF THE OUTWARD THINGS THAT OTHER PEOPLE HAD DONE, INSIDE I WAS JUDGMENTAL. Uh, I WAS MEAN, I WAS CRITICAL, I WAS JEALOUS. THE BIBLE SAYS IF YOU'VE COMMITTED, uh, IF YOU'VE LUSTED IN YOUR HEART, IT'S LIKE COMMITTING ADULTERY, AND I HAD LUSTED, AND I, I BECAME AWARE OF ALL OF THESE THINGS. AND I MEAN, I SAW MYSELF VILE AND FILTHY. THAT'S WHAT THE LAW DOES. AND I JUST POURED EVERYTHING OUT. I TURNED MYSELF INSIDE OUT BECAUSE I HONESTLY THOUGHT THAT GOD WAS GOING TO KILL ME. I WAS IN THE PRESENCE OF A HOLY GOD. AND YOU KNOW, EVERY TIME IN THE BIBLE THAT SOMETHING LIKE THAT HAPPENED, PEOPLE, FEAR WOULD COME UPON THEM. THEY WOULD EXCEEDINGLY FEAR AND QUAKE. AND THAT'S EXACTLY THE WAY THAT I WAS. AND SO I JUST WAS GOING TO MENTION EVERYTHING I COULD THINK OF. I WAS GOING TO CONFESS EVERY SIN I'D EVER DONE OR THOUGHT OR EVER WOULD DO. JUST HOPING THAT THAT WOULD BE ENOUGH AND THAT GOD WOULD COVER IT. AND TO MY AMAZEMENT, AFTER ABOUT AN HOUR AND A HALF OF ME JUST RUINING WHATEVER REPUTATION I HAD IN FRONT OF ALL OF THE CHURCH LEADERS, WE WERE IN A BIBLE STUDY, AND ALL OF THE CHURCH LEADERS AND MY FRIENDS WERE THERE, AND I CONFESSED THINGS THAT NOBODY SHOULD HAVE HEARD. I CONFESSED EVERYTHING I'D THOUGHT OR DONE OR WHATEVER. AND AFTER ABOUT AN HOUR AND A HALF OF THAT, I JUST HAD NOTHING LEFT TO SAY, AND I WAS JUST WAITING TO SEE WHAT GOD'S RESPONSE WAS. AND INSTEAD OF WRATH, THERE WAS A SUPERNATURAL LOVE THAT CAME OVER ME. AND I MEAN, I KNEW THAT I KNEW THAT I KNEW THAT GOD HAD FORGIVEN ME AND LOVED ME, NOT BASED ON WHAT I'D DONE, BUT JUST BASED ON THE FACT THAT HE IS LOVE. AND THE REASON I EVEN BROUGHT THAT STORY UP IS TO SAY THAT THIS PARABLE ABOUT, YOU KNOW, HE FORGAVE ONE MAN HUNDREDS OF THOUSANDS OF DOLLARS, BUT THEN HE WOULDN'T FORGIVE SOMEBODY ELSE. IF YOU EVER UNDERSTAND HOW MUCH YOU'VE BEEN FORGIVEN, AND EVEN THOUGH I MAY NOT HAVE DONE SOME OF THE THINGS THAT OTHER PEOPLE HAVE DONE, I THINK THAT I HAVE A GREATER REVELATION OF GOD'S FORGIVENESS FOR ME THAN OTHER PEOPLE BECAUSE I HAVE SEEN THE GLORY OF GOD AND I'VE SEEN MY RELATIVE UNWORTHINESS, AND BECAUSE OF THAT, IT IS NOT A PROBLEM FOR ME TO FORGIVE OTHER PEOPLE. I'VE HAD PEOPLE DO TERRIBLE THINGS TO ME. I'VE HAD PEOPLE GO ON NATIONAL TELEVISION AND SAY I'M THE SLICKEST CULT SINCE JIM JONES. I'VE HAD PEOPLE LIE ABOUT ME. I'VE HAD PEOPLE DO ALL KINDS OF THINGS. AND SOME OF THESE VERY PEOPLE, THIS PERSON WHO WAS ON NATIONAL TELEVISION, THEY GOT INTO TROUBLE FINANCIALLY AND NEEDED HELP, AND I SENT THEM MONEY AND HELPED THEM. AND I'VE FORGIVEN THEM. AND I've, I'VE BEEN ABLE TO FORGIVE PEOPLE. YOU KNOW WHY? BECAUSE I REALIZE HOW MUCH I'VE BEEN FORGIVEN. AND THAT'S ONE OF THE THINGS THAT THE LAW DOES. THE LAW PAINTS A PICTURE. It, THE LAW IS LIKE A MIRROR. YOU KNOW, IF YOU GO LOOK IN A MIRROR, YOU CAN SEE. IF YOU HAVE YOUR HAIR MESSED UP, YOU CAN SEE. IF YOU HAVE ZITS OR IF YOU GOT WRINKLES OR WHATEVER IT IS, THE LAW WILL SHOW YOU A REFLECTION OF WHAT YOU ARE REALLY LIKE, NOT WHAT PEOPLE SAY YOU ARE LIKE, NOT WHAT YOU THINK YOU ARE LIKE, YOU KNOW, YOU COULD HAVE SOMEBODY DRAW A PICTURE OF YOU AND THEY MIGHT BE FLATTERING AND THEY MAY TAKE OUT SOME OF THE IMPERFECTIONS THAT YOU'VE GOT AND IT MAY NOT BE AN ACCURATE REPRESENTATION, BUT YOU GO LOOK IN A MIRROR, YOU ARE GOING TO SEE YOURSELF THE WAY THAT YOU ARE. AND THAT'S THE WAY THAT THE LAW IS. THE LAW WILL REVEAL YOUR UNGODLINESS TO YOU. IT NEVER WILL SHOW YOU THE GOODNESS IN YOU. THE LAW WON'T SHOW YOU YOUR BORN AGAIN SPIRIT. IT WON'T SHOW YOU WHO YOU ARE IN CHRIST. ALL THE LAW WILL DO IS CONDEMN. THAT'S WHAT THE SCRIPTURE SAYS, Second CORINTHIANS, CHAPTER 3, VERSE 7, THE LAW WAS A MINISTRATION OF DEATH. VERSE 9 SAYS IT WAS A MINISTRATION OF CONDEMNATION. THE LAW WAS TO KILL YOU AND TO CONDEMN YOU AND TO SHOW YOU HOW UNGODLY YOU WERE SO THAT YOU WOULD QUIT TRUSTING IN YOURSELF AND YOU WOULD COME TO THE LORD AND RECEIVE SALVATION ON THE BASIS OF WHAT JESUS DID, NOT ON THE BASIS OF WHAT YOU'VE DONE. AND WHEN YOU UNDERSTAND THIS, THIS IS WHAT I'VE BEEN TRYING TO GET ACROSS FOR FIVE WEEKS. 
WHEN YOU UNDERSTAND THIS AND UNDERSTAND THAT IT HAS NOTHING TO DO WITH YOU, IT IS NOTHING ABOUT YOUR GOODNESS, IT'S ALL ABOUT HIS GOODNESS. WHEN YOU SEE AND UNDERSTAND THAT, NOT ONLY DO YOU ACCEPT AND RECEIVE THE LOVE OF GOD AS A GIFT, BUT IT JUST SETS YOU FREE FROM THE DEVIL'S CONDEMNATION. BECAUSE, SEE, ALL THE DEVIL CAN CONDEMN YOU OVER IS YOUR ACTIONS. AND WHEN YOU UNDERSTAND THAT MY RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD ISN'T BASED ON MY ACTIONS, IT'S BASED ON MY FAITH IN JESUS. IT'S BASED UPON ME RECEIVING WHAT JESUS DID FOR ME, NOT WHAT I DO FOR HIM. WHEN YOU UNDERSTAND THAT, IT JUST SETS YOU FREE. YOU KNOW, I'VE MADE MANY MISTAKES IN THE MINISTRY. MAN, THERE'S BEEN PEOPLE THAT I SHOULD HAVE TREATED BETTER THAN I DID, BUT BECAUSE OF MY OWN IMMATURITY AND WHATEVER, YOU COULD GO INTO A LOT OF DIFFERENT THINGS. BUT I HAVEN'T DONE THINGS RIGHT. I DON'T ALWAYS TREAT PEOPLE RIGHT. I DON'T DO EVERYTHING RIGHT. BUT MAN, I KNOW, I MEAN, I KNOW MY EXPERIENCE THAT GOD DOESN'T LOVE ME BECAUSE I'VE DONE EVERYTHING RIGHT. I KNOW THAT GOD LOVES ME BECAUSE I'VE ACCEPTED JESUS AND I'VE MADE JESUS MY PERSONAL SAVIOR. AND THAT'S WHAT GIVES ME RIGHT STANDING WITH GOD. MY RELATIONSHIP IS BASED ON JESUS AND WHAT HE DID FOR ME AND NOT WHAT I DO FOR HIM. AND BECAUSE OF THAT, SATAN CAN'T ACCUSE ME. YOU KNOW, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS THAT WE'RE SUPPOSED TO AGREE WITH OUR ADVERSARY QUICKLY WHILE WE'RE IN THE WAY. I THINK THERE'S MULTIPLE WAYS TO APPLY THAT, BUT ONE OF THE WAYS THAT I APPLY IT IS WHEN THE DEVIL COMES TO ME AND STARTS SAYING, MAN, YOU HADN'T STUDIED THE WORD ENOUGH. YOU DON'T DO THIS ENOUGH. YOU HAVEN'T BEEN DOING THIS. YOU HAVEN'T DONE THIS. AND HE STARTS CONDEMNING ME OVER SOMETHING. INSTEAD OF ME GETTING IN AND TRYING TO JUSTIFY MYSELF AND SAYING, NOW, WAIT A MINUTE. I MAY NOT BE PERFECT, BUT I'M BETTER THAN I HAVE BEEN. I'M GETTING BETTER. AND THE MOMENT YOU START TRYING TO JUSTIFY YOURSELF AND MAKE YOURSELF TO WHERE YOU ARE WORTHY FOR GOD'S BLESSINGS, YOU'VE LOST. BECAUSE EVEN THOUGH YOU MIGHT HAVE DONE BETTER THAN YOU DID IN THE PAST, YOU'RE ALWAYS GOING TO COME UP SHORT, AND THE MOMENT YOU START RELATING TO GOD ON THE BASIS OF YOUR GOODNESS, SATAN IS GOING TO DEFEAT YOU. BUT THE SCRIPTURE SAYS AGREE WITH YOUR ADVERSARY. SO WHEN THE DEVIL COMES TO ME AND STARTS SAYING, YOU HADN'T DONE THIS AND YOU HADN'T DONE THAT, ALL THESE THINGS, YOU KNOW WHAT, I'LL JUST SAY, yeah, YOU'RE RIGHT. YOU KNOW WHAT, I SHOULD BE DOING MORE. I SHOULD BE STUDYING MORE. I SHOULD BE PRAYING MORE. I SHOULD BE LOVING PEOPLE MORE. I, I AM GUILTY, BUT PRAISE GOD, IT'S NOT BASED ON MY PERFORMANCE. IT'S BASED ON WHAT JESUS DID. AND I JUST STAY IN THE LOVE OF GOD, THE UNCONDITIONAL LOVE OF GOD, NOT A CONDITIONAL LOVE WHERE I HAVE TO EARN IT OR MAINTAIN IT. SEE, THAT'S WHAT these, THIS TEACHING HAS BEEN ALL ABOUT. THE WAR IS OVER. GOD IS NOT GIVING ME WHAT I DESERVE. JESUS ENDED ALL OF THAT. ALL OF MY SIN, ALL OF MY FAILURES WERE PLACED ON JESUS. AND NOW I HAVE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD THROUGH JESUS AND NOT THROUGH MYSELF. AND BECAUSE OF THAT, I ACTUALLY NOW LIVE A HOLIER LIFE ACCIDENTALLY AS A BYPRODUCT, AS A FRUIT, THAN I EVER DID AS A ROOT OF SALVATION. NOW I LIVE HOLY AS A BYPRODUCT. THAT'S WHAT THIS TEACHING IS ABOUT. AND I WANT TO REMIND YOU THAT TODAY IS MY LAST DAY TO OFFER YOU THIS BOOK AND ALL OF THESE MATERIALS. I HAVE THIS BOOK NOT ONLY IN ENGLISH, BUT WE HAVE A SPANISH VERSION OF IT RIGHT HERE. WE HAVE A STUDY GUIDE NOT ONLY IN ENGLISH, BUT ALSO IN SPANISH. AND THEN I HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S. AND I PROMISE YOU THAT THIS TEACHING WOULD LITERALLY CHANGE YOUR LIFE. IT HAS TRANSFORMED MINE. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU THE INFORMATION. REMEMBER, TODAY IS MY LAST DAY TO OFFER THIS OVER OUR TELEVISION PROGRAM, SO PLEASE GO TO THE EFFORT TO WRITE DOWN THIS INFORMATION, CALL OR WRITE TODAY AND RECEIVE THE MATERIALS. AND JOIN ME AGAIN NEXT MONDAY AS WE CONTINUE THE GOSPEL TRUTH.